Imagine that thing can't bust and you're still talking, man, and that's not nice, bro. Yeah, that's the thing. 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 Yeah, that's the Like I was relaxing and this thing messed an hour, bro. Like, and I thought to myself that I was gonna wait for you to finish yeah. that sentence, and then I explained that no, look, I have left that one minute. That <laughs> you know that Elena with it. You know that moment where you're waiting for someone to finish talking like a line, so you can tell them that talk back only once again, but they're still talking. <laughs> <laughs> like that's really what happened on 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 the live like I was trying to wait for that hey so the so the so, so the hot plate is not connected hey munna the hot plate is working put some feel to that thing boy let me try munna my my filters have been loaded this thing is still new Ah, they loaded. Munna, these things are on your Instagram account, not on the phone. Like 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 the phone. Um, uh, what are we talking about today? Um, now we're talking charts. We're talking psychology. We are talking progress. We are talking inspiration, and we are talking plans for the future. I think when when I was live with Major, like we were trying to like, explain to the people that like this, like more content that they should expect from us is slightly different from what is already been given out there because we're, we're only just trying to you know, change how. the forex name is and how the forex industry is uh and you know by by basically bringing in value to the table and that's what uh you know we were still trying to explain there on that line okay so let me try to do this also wait yeah i think that was fun And then Fana approved and verified, boy. Approved and verified. What are you talking about, my boy? I'm talking about the whole plate. It's too much, yeah. I say, Lord, man, you can't pay thirty-two thousand for nothing. You can't. Absolutely not. You can't. Hey, man, this ring, this ring lights of yours, man. Maybe these things that keep on falling or whatever. Hey, hey man, my ring light is here, man. This is my ring light. If I if I want to bring my ring light to the table, you fanak, it it is gonna be a mess. You see, it's the size of my head. So if you know how big my head is, you will know how big this ring light is. Knock out head. Yeah, so boy. New CCTV at Keys. Yes, ah, Munna, this is not a CCTV. It's a hot that's plate. That's a drone, Munna. That's not a CCTV. That's a drone. So the boys are handsome. The boys are clean. The skin is talking. The skin is breathing. The boys are handsome. The boys are clean. Ah, it's a lot. It's a lot, Munna. This was this was the phone you guys called CCTV. This is the phone that you guys call CCTV. This one. And they are still doing the things, man. Ah, ta ta, buto. Oh boy. So okay, my boy. So yeah. So this is what I want us to talk about next. Because then we really don't want to waste people's data and people's times. Because then every single time we go live, we must go live with 
um, you know, with direction and obviously content, impact, you know, with proper content and you bring an impact. So as we were talking with Major, Major mentioned a whole lot of things that can help people out. Number one being the biggest psychological factor of speaking to your own brain. So when Abu Dwaka, only style you should saw one. Like the style you should saw na Ubolana as Abu Dwaka and a Ubaila would play different after so what can you say to someone who's, 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 who's new to the country and what, what can be the biggest thing that you want them to focus on for them to basically grow? At least some, something that someone can take and say, I learned this from tonight's life, that from here I'm going to go home and implement this and basically be a better thing. This is what I was saying, ne? To the to the guys earlier on. Obviously, we're planning on having a tour. Proto, you know, my guy. So this is what I was saying, obviously, to the guys today that we were having that meeting with. Um, number one, we are not we are not here to to eat off from the people that are trying to make it also in the game. Obviously, we are here to inspire people. You know. Okay, the background music is distracting us. Let me try to turn it down. Let me try to turn it down. Baby, until you see some of that. Who's it? There are Bugela and T. Who Bugela my idols? But the people are complaining. They're saying it's making noise. Let me put the phone on the charge. It's low. It's been updating the whole team. Yeah, so um number one point eh? we are not in this game to 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 eat off from the people that are also trying to make it in the game right mm -hmm. secondly um we wanna we wanna inspire a black child um we wanna inspire someone that wants to make it out there obviously so the yeah. first thing that i said i said to the chance today with regards to trading nas 100 nas 100 is very easy so it's a game of emotions. Yeah. Anyone can analyze this thing. I just saw quite a, quite a number of people uh, have sent their analysis on, on, the, on, the, on the live and stuff like that and everything. Yeah. So if, 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 if you trade NAS 100 and you miss an end, you shouldn't chase for that end. That's the first thing. This is the psychology of, of being a successful NAS 100 trade. If you miss an entry, you shouldn't chase the end. It's gone. If you miss next day, get your support, it's gone. If you miss next day, get your resistance, it's gone. So you, the minute you start going to M1, looking for an inch, that's where you know you've got it wrong. The minute you start going to M5, looking for an inch, that's the minute you know you've got it wrong. That's where the blowing comes in. That's where, that's where the losing of money comes in. So next day requires a, 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 lot of, a lot of discipline. It requires a lot of um, psychological discipline, controlling your emotions. There's a lot of money in Nestle. And there's a lot of positive money also. You can also experience a lot of negative money also. That means you can make a lot of money and you can also lose the same amount of money that you would, you would make in Nestle. Nestle requires a lot of discipline. That is the art of mastering Nestle. Anyone can analyze Nestle. I was saying to you, boy, Uguti, um, Sometimes you want to draw a line and I'll try to trade. The best trade is to a line. This is a shy TP. Do you understand me? Yeah. So sometimes people analyze and then the trade just goes and hit TP with that arrow that they drew. They didn't take the trade because they were afraid, number one. Number two, because they missed it. So if you missed if you missed the trade, it's fine. Let the trade go. If you miss the trade, it's fine. It's okay. You'll find another trade. The market is a repetitious cycle. So what happens today happened last week. It happened last year. It happened last month. So the market always gives you these things. It gives you a repetitious cycle. It bounces off its support. Next year, it will do the same thing. It can't change because you are starting to trade today. So if you miss the trade, don't rush for an entry. Don't go for another entry. Looking for an entry at M1 
and then you are you draw a ridiculous support and resistance levels on your uh, on your smaller time frames. So if you miss an entry, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. You know, it's the same with anything else that is to trade out there. You know, so if 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 if, if let's say someone out there is is asking themselves, what am I doing wrong? What did I do wrong on this trade? Sometimes yeah. you, see, you 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 miss a trade at entry. And then you catch it along the way. It comes and retest your support again, and then it dies. You know. So I was saying, um, it's better to blow an account because it went against your your analysis than blowing an account because you caught it late. Mm. You get it. So you can't mm. say the people that are on my signals group know. I don't give out Nasdaq signals as much as I give out other currency pairs, whatever the case. I probably give out two signals for Nasdaq a day, and per zero point zero one, it, I don't close four hundred on on zero point zero one. I don't close two hundred on a zero point zero one. I close serious money on a zero point zero one. I close about thousand rand, two thousand on a zero point zero one. You know why? Because I I catch it at support. I let it go to resistance. That is how I trade higher time frame. Yeah. And number one, if you have ten thousand rands that you are trading on Nasdaq, and you are saying, "I'm willing to lose two thousand on this trade," you 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 withdraw the eight thousand and put it aside, and you trade the the two thousand that you are willing to lose. Obviously, you have your 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 levels marked up. You have your zones marked up, support and resistance, and all of that. Once the market touches support. You don't buy when it touches support. You wait for confirmation because no one said the market will will will, will reverse at support or it will buy from support. They can easily break that level and go go the opposite direction. It's very possible with forex, you know, with anything that is to trade out there, including VIX, including uh, boom and crash, including everything. So you wait for confirmation. Um, add your zones. And then that's where you enter. So as an asset trader, you always need to be on your chart. You always need to be head, head, hands on when it comes to 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 to, to your chart work. You know, you put in the time, you put in the work, you put in the energy. Believe it or not, it's very much possible to master an asset. You know, but it's very much possible. You 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 can you can't lose when you are following up on your work. You know, you have your your markups nicely marked up, and you wait for confirmations. You don't buy. So there's certain patterns and certain and certain confirmations that I personally look out for that I'm teaching my mentees that I mentor for them to also look out for them because I can't win alone. When you are my mentee, you also need to 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 win the same way that I win. You know, you can't you yeah. you, you can't lose when I'm winning. That means me being a mentor to you is in vain. You know, if I'm winning, you also need to win. So that comes with discipline. Number one, though. The reason why I'm starting to see consistency in my trading career is because it is only now that I'm applying discipline. It is only mm. now that I'm I'm applying discipline. So if 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 number one, discipline comes in two ways. Yeah. Discipline comes in two ways. So there's discipline of entering a trade and there's discipline of leaving a trade. So you were talking about daily targets earlier on. Ne? So if 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 you are a trader, obviously you have daily targets. You calculate your expenses for the month. You calculate your expenses for the week. You calculate your expenses for the day. You have your daily targets. If you are targeting two thousand rands a day and you are holding a trade, once it gets to two thousand rands, that is when you dis you discipline yourself to exit the trade. Mm -hmm. You don't hold the trade when you've reached your daily target. That is where the greed comes in. And remember. Greed is an enemy of success. Once you start, once the greed starts creeping in, boy, then success is an enemy to you. So if you are greedy, you are an enemy to success. You and success cannot cannot be spoken about in the same sentence. When you are greedy, so if you have daily targets, you close. Once you see two thousand, you close. Two thousand and forty-five rand, you close. Two thousand one hundred, you close. Two thousand and forty-five cents, you close. Because that is your daily discipline. You know. Your daily target is reached. You for, you forget about the charts. Sometimes it happens that the market just shoots up, and you see five thousand, and your target was two thousand. It's fine. You close the five thousand. That means you are what you are you are you are a day ahead. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow you are trading and you have floating two thousand. That that was unplanned. 
you know. Mm -hmm. So you are speaking, you are speaking to a trading plan. Remember, you 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 just made five thousand unexpected, and then now this means that you are two days ahead. You you have yeah. today's profit and you have tomorrow's profit. So it's all upon you. If you are trading the next day, you are trading with one day ahead. That is when success is sped up, you know. And then the following day, you see that. I know I'm not feeling like trading today. You don't trade. But if you yeah. trade, you know that I've already secured then the following day. And the other day, you blow 2,000. So in mm. your trading plan, you are still fine because in five days, you've made uh, 12,000 when you, when you had planned to make 10,000. So you, you've made yeah. 12,000. And the 2,000 that you blew is out of your plan. And number, and number two, number two, this is what I want to tell you. Very important. So there's positive discipline and there's, uh, okay, there's discipline of entering a trade, discipline of leaving a trade. I just touched up on those things. Number two, emotions. So this is what most mentors don't teach. They teach you support and resistance, trend line, when to enter and when to exit. So when it comes to emotions, um, emotions, emotions come in two ways. So there's positive emotions, there's negative emotions, right? What do I mean by this? When you're holding a trade and it goes to the negative side, maybe faking out or pulling back, you're holding a trade. You enter the support, write confirmations and stuff, and the trade decides to pull back or to fake out. Probably you find that 10,000, the account is holding minus 7,000. This is where the emotions come in. Do you either close that money or do you hold? Mm. That is the question. But remember, with Nestec, you don't trade an account you are willing to lose. So if you find a 10,000 rand account, that means I'm willing to blow that account. That's how I trade, personal. So let's say it holds minus 8,000 right mm. now. That account is holding minus 8,000. And I, I'm willing to lose the 10,000. I close my phone. I put it away. Why am I doing this? In my mind, when I find a third account, I said, if this account blows, I'm okay. I'm fine with that mm. account blowing. And when it comes back to positive, do I close at break even or do I hold to TP? So when when, when it pushes up from 10,000, you're holding 7,000. It comes mm. back to 2,000. Right? That's a pullback. Do you, do you re-add trades or do you leave your initial trades or do you close? So now this is where the positive emotions come in. So yeah. whenever people see money when they are trading, their minds get disturbed. Their minds get disturbed. Their heart gets jumpy. Their blood starts running. That shouldn't happen. When you're holding 2,000 out of a 10,000 rand account, obviously risk to reward. I'm willing to blow 10,000 for me to make how much? For me to make 50,000. It's not yeah. easy to hold 50,000. It's not easy to get to 50,000. When you see me posting many profits or whatever the case, posting 50,000 from 1.5. At some point, that account was holding 8,000. It went mm. to it went to 2,000. It went mm. to 5,000. It went to 3,000. It went to mm. 15. It went to 7. So this is now where the positive emotions come. So when the positive yeah. emotions come, that means um, you are able to hold um, the, po the, the positive profits until they hit TP, no matter what happens to them. If you know that the market is going there, obviously you had planned your trade, you had planned your target, you had planned your money, um, the, the risk to reward, you, you had planned your reward and whatever the case. So if you're holding minus, if you're holding positive 7,000 and after 10 minutes it's on positive 3,000, after 10 minutes it's on positive 50,000, you don't panic, you just relax. This is where the positive emotion comes. The road to success is bumpy, it's not straight. You can't hold mm. 10,000 to 50,000 at the same time. So you need to control yeah. your negative emotions and your positive emotions. That's how you make it in nesting. So what I'm talking about, guys, is what we are trying to bring to, 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 to each and everyone that we inspire out there. Is what we are trying to bring, bring to everyone uh, that's trading out there, everyone that's aspiring to be a nested trader. Um, we are trying to show them that this thing is easy. And we are trying yeah. to revive the game, you know, because a lot of people are selling false information. A lot of people are selling fake information. A lot of people are selling lifestyle instead of selling charts. So this is what I want to teach. Specifically and most, from and most people also got lucky on the journey. And so they're using their luck to get into people's pockets. M most definitely, boy. 
listen, this is what I personally, stylish kids, wanna bring to the community. I, I don't wanna I don't wanna be a mentor that produces people that are lesser than me because I believe that a student is is all is always greater than the master. Because yeah. personally a stylish kids, I went through a lot for me to be the person that I am today. Someone doesn't mm -hmm. know that someone doesn't know most of the things that I went through. I had to blow accounts. I, I had to hold 57,000 from, from 10,000, hold 70 something thousand from 10,000 and blow that money still. And because of the, because of the experiences that I went through, um, I can't allow my mentees to go through the same thing. That's why I'm saying it doesn't make sense for someone to blow an account when they've seen, when they've seen serious money on that account. I don't know if I'm making sense. You can't hold 5,000 and allow the account to go back to minus five rand. You can't. It doesn't yeah. happen. So, so, mm -hmm. so this, this is why people need mentors in life. You, ca you, can't, you, 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 you can't go through the same thing that I went through. So that's why you need a mentor for you to cut the, sh the journey short. Because a mentor helps you not to step where they stepped and where they made mistakes. So this is one yeah. thing, bro. I'm not going to make the same mistakes I made. So mm -hmm. I can't teach people to do the same mistakes that I made. You get it? So, yeah, yeah. people need to understand. There's a whole lot of psychology um, that comes with trading next day. Uh, that, this is coming from me, and that's why I'm a trader. At some point, uh, I even decided that I'm not going to trade next day anymore. I started trading currency curves. But I realized one thing. Let me just sit down and and, and, and do a rain check. What did I go wrong? What did I go wrong? And the answer was, I wasn't disciplined enough to be an estate trader. You can't be an estate trader when you're not disciplined. And this is, this is, this is the reason why a lot of South African traders are going to are gonna donate a lot of money on nested because they are not disciplined. A lot, of, yeah. a lot of traders in SA are donating money to the brokers. We are not here for that. We are not here for losing. Losing is not our portion. Winning mm. is our portion. So we need yeah. to do things the right way. We need to do things yeah. the way they need to be done, the way they have to be done. You know, and that is being disciplined with with anything. That is being disciplined. You can't say, "I wanna make it in forex." You find your last thousand rand, and you trade Nasdaq. My guy, you are ch you are taking chances. You are gambling. If, mm. if 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 you are a trader and you have your last one thousand rands and you fund nasty, you are in for a shame, my guy. You are in for a shame. And a lot of people have seen it happening. They fund their last one thousand rands and 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 they they trade nasty and they they don't open one zero one with, with a thousand mm. rand account. They they oh. open ten zero point zero one. People will surprise you. People will shock you. This person is relying on this thousand rand for, for this thousand rand to multiply and, and, and produce rent money. And this person is putting in five zero ones on a thousand rand account. Uh, it will end in tears. It will yeah. end in tears. I think, I think, I think also, like what, what you're touching on is a very touchy subject that I've also been trying to push and trying to basically bring onto the community that um, South African traders are a whole lot different from the rest of the world. And not, not, not meaning to... Actually, let me just put Africa under one umbrella because I know this happens in most African countries. I'm going to count South Africa. I'm going to count um, Tanzania. I'm going to count Zambia. I'm going to count Nigeria. I'm going to count, uh, you know, um, what's this? Uh, what, what's this? Um, Namibia. I'm going to count these, these countries that Forex is widely broadening and growing. And, you know, this, this is so sad that we come from an unprivileged background so much that um, we, we, we aspire to be great. We want money. And when we get to that point of having money, the background that we were brought up in kind of reflects on how we then trade. We bring in our, our social economic traumas onto the charts that we've grown, we grew up with no money. And that is why when you find that most people make it in the game, then they use their money to oppress the ones who don't have money. And which is why then you see on Instagram, you find beefs arising because then 
this is basically telling us that we grew up with no money. Like, if you're going to come and bash other people because now you've got slightly more money than other people, what you are saying to us is you grew up with no money, you were poor when you grew up, and so now you are having money and it's getting into your head. And this, that reflects even on how we train. Like, we are going to come and train, and when we train, we want to take... Uh, we want to take the impulsive direction of trading. We're not trading professionally and institutionally. The way white people have been trading for years before we even got the chance to come into trading. Because remember that trading did not come, did not start now. Trading did not start in 2020, now that you're finding out about it in 2020. It did not start in 2017 when I found out about it. But in 2017, when I started, there were people who were trading for 10 years, you know, but we're still in the game. There's people who've been trading for, for 20 years and are still consistent in the game. And the only thing that helped them get to that level of consistency is discipline. Discipline can take us a long way. And the black community and the black nation has been brought up in such a way that we are not disciplined individuals. You see this in how we, we treat ourselves and how we behave and how we relate with people, that we were brought in a system in a way that is undisciplined. Even how we speak to elderly people, you can see that we are not disciplined individuals. And this thing comes into our training, and then it reflects on how we trade. Because one thing that trading is going to do, Trading is going to show you who you are, even if you do not know who you are. But when you come to the market, then you will know who you are. We will see who you are and you will understand who you are based on how you are trading. You know what I'm saying? So people that come onto the market with an impulsive behavior, with an undisciplined behavior, and they put that onto the market. And they are very impatient. And because they are very impatient, when you go to a store, when you go to a restaurant, and then the food takes about 10 minutes to be prepared. Then you start complaining. That reflects on the charts as well. That you cannot wait for an hour to, for you to make profits. But as soon as you see rain, in the first 10 minutes, you want to close because you are impatient. You cannot wait for two days for your profits to mature. As soon as you see like small money, you're thinking to yourself, I'm not moving. Because you are generally an, an impatient individual. And this is what then happens, that we come to the market and we bring these traumas and these behaviors onto the charts. And then we round in circles, we round in circles, we round in circles. And then you ask yourself, why are we at this point? That's because we have got, uh, you know, problems with who we are and that reflects on the market. And what you're saying now is a powerful point that you only realize that, you know what, like I've been trading for the longest time and i've been making small money but the minute it dawned upon your mind that you know what i need to put myself on this level of big discipline that's when you started seeing real money and that's what we're trying to bring to the people that trading is not just about instagram forget about instagram everything you see on instagram erase it wipe it and focus on yourself and what you have got to do for yourself and your family and that's where it starts. You can never move and shift to the next direction and level if you don't take a decision of self-introspecting, looking at where you are and where you want to be and the steps you have to take for you to be there. And you're looking at everyone else just doing things nice and you want to blend into the hype. The reason why I even took a stance to de-associate myself and to de-entangle myself from most affiliations in the markets is because sometimes you get into specific spaces and you come back with a different mindset and you feel like you're not working enough because you go to those spaces and people put negative pressure on you to say we have bigger accounts than your account so you need to pull up your socks and at that time you were working fine you were working nice at your own pace and your own name you come back to your own space with negative pressure, negative energy, and you want to push, and then you come to your charts and you trade and you start blowing accounts because you got some specific information that came into your space and made you feel like you are working less because they probably have bigger accounts than yours, which is something Listen that to really this, boy. Listen to this. Um, I won't talk about a lot of things, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a difference between being a profitable trader and being a gambler. True, man. That's so very true. A lot, of, a lot of traders that come into the Nasdaq field are not into the field to trade NAS, but they're in this field 
to literally pull themselves out of poverty in God. And you, you, you can't force yourself to, to move out of poverty in a sense that um, you are now gambling with your money on Nasdaq. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you can't. You can't gamble with your money on Nasdaq. So yeah. there's people that, that hope, hope that, I hope, I hope this happens. You can't trade Nasdaq if you're a person that trades with hope. You don't trade with also, hope. While we're on that, then I'm going to touch on that and then we, we move on. Forex is not about hope. Like, Forex is not about hope. If we're ever going to be honest, Forex is pure skill, no guesswork. It's not about hope. It's not one takes is a four, my dog. Like, it shouldn't be like that. No, no. Forex there's a statement. The statement. The statement. There's a statement that circulates on the Nasdaq um, environment or community that says, risk and don't. I don't believe in that. You can't risk uh, in a sense that how padile utatoma. Why does it have to get to a point to go to upadi? It's because people um, come to this field with the mentality of of gambling. You know, my matasi. You more you might see you might see a thousand rand, hoping that if nyawi nangzobu ya nemalenga, if nyaziwa nangzobu ma nemalenga. I don't trade with that mentality. Yeah. Yeah. So if you trade, you need to trade knowing what you, what you are doing. You see, mm -hmm. I always post this on, on, on my feed. I don't take chances on Nasdaq. That's yeah. why I'm always within when the Nasdaq market sells. Not that I can't buy Nasdaq. I can buy Nasdaq very well and very clean. I can buy Nasdaq. I mean, buys are, are even easier than the sales. But that's yeah. why I'm selling Nasdaq more than I'm buying it right now. The recent is because I want to I want to show people that it's very much possible that um, you can trade what the market gives you than trading what what the hype is what the hype is out there. I always say the statement that Major quoted just a couple of minutes ago: um, Instagram doesn't move the market. Instagram doesn't move Nasdaq. That's one thing yeah. you need to register in your mind. If you see someone saying. Nasdaq is going to 11,500 or Nasdaq is going to 12,000 now. That doesn't mean because so-and-so posted Nasdaq is going to go to that point. It even goes to, 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 to a certain extent that even Donald Trump cannot break the structure of Nasdaq. I, I've mm -hmm. said that to me. Go and tell your mentors that he said that. Even Donald Trump cannot, cannot break the structure of Nasdaq. I don't. You see, you see, you see how, how I've been killing Nasdaq. I haven't been. I haven't been watching fundamentals on Nasdaq. I haven't deleted that CNPC app on my phone. I don't have it on my phone. You know why? It's because we've been taught so much that um, CNPC influences the move of Nasdaq more than the fundamentals do. This is one thing I'm gonna tell you. That is a lie from the pit of hell. What moves the market is the structure, the price action, the movement of the market. That is what moves the market. Even when Donald Trump tweets that coronavirus vaccine is here, Nasdaq cannot break a zone that is strong. Instead, if they break it, there has to be a sign that the market gives to you that the market will break the zone. So that's why I trade Nasdaq fundamental. A lot of people were, were shocked. How did Keys know that Nasdaq is selling? Munna, I analyzed sort of about that. I analyzed that thing on my charts. That's why I know that Nasdaq is going to sell. And when Nasdaq mm -hmm. will buy, that's when I know that Nasdaq is buying. Not that, not that I, 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 I listen to these traders on Instagram. I listen... I don't follow Trump on Twitter. In, as a matter of fact, I don't use tweets. I don't trade Trump. I don't trade candlesticks. I trade the market. I trade the market. So if the market says we are on an uptrending market, obviously I expect my lows and highs. I buy my low, I buy, I buy low, I sell high. That is simple. Even when Trump says things are bad for the states, just know that the market will touch the high and sell to the low. It cannot mm -hmm. break structure. 
Donald Trump cannot break structure. The Nasdaq market has been there so long, for, for a long time. Not even Donald Trump can break the structure. He, Donald Trump has been president for a very short time. Nasdaq has been there since, since 1977. So Donald Trump cannot come now and break the Nasdaq structure. You get my mm. point? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah that gets you. so you see, this hype that is all over for you would um, Instagram, Instagram this, Instagram that, Instagram this, Twitter this, Twitter that, Twitter this, Twitter that. Emuna, that is a lie. Emuna, as a matter of fact, dog, as a matter of fact, dog, like, Emuna, there's a guy that I need to remove, man, this guy. I'm going to pin him on this thing. You see yourself, you to do the what what? Man, I'm removing you from this life, man. This guy, what, what, what's wrong with this man, bruh? Like he's bringing in bad vibes, man. Go tell Globex 360 what you are telling us, man, that they are unregulated. We don't work for Globex, man. How? This guy. I told as, a it down, fact, as, a, as a matter of fact, bruh, like Nasdaq used to move before traders could even trade Nasdaq. So before Nasdaq became famous on Instagram, it was still moving. So it, it can't just move now, now, because now... Instagram traders are saying Nasdaq is going away and then it's gonna follow them. Nah, boy. It's been it's been there from way back, from 9-5, boy. Listen to this, dog. Every trader, including myself, every trader that calls themselves king of Nasdaq, king of Nas 100, Lord of Nas 100, Nas 100 prophet, God of Nas 100, whatever the case. Nestec has been there before any of us could even think about Nestec. As a matter of fact, I've traded Nestec for a long time now. And there's nothing that I think in my head drives Nestec. You know, whatever that I think in my head doesn't even influence the move of Nestec. But what, what influences the move of Nestec is the structure of Nestec. I'm able to catch these moves because I always 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 refine 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 my you are forgiven him to do you are forgiven bro don't take it personal i i always i always refine my skill i always refine um my knowledge i always I, I'm, I'm i'm forever a student when it comes to the market that's why i'm always trading the market the way i trade it that's why i always catch moves the way i catch it because i allow the market to give me what it wants to give me at the time it wants to give me. So, dog, forex is, is 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 probability. You learn you learn the you learn the pair, you learn the movement, and you learn the reaction, and you learn the behavior. It's the same with Nestec. Yeah, you know, I I know there's 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 certain there's certain patterns that Nestec always creates. So whenever I analyze. I play around those patterns using my head, using mm. the structure, and using the zones that, that the market that the market prints out for me to yeah. predict the next move. People are people are shocked now. How did stylish kids know that Nestle, even the even the greatest mentors, even the greatest mentors are shocked. How did stylish know? I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm not saying I'm great. I'm not saying I'm better than whoever. This is what I'm saying. The best way you can become the best Nasdaq trader is to allow Nasdaq to teach you how it moves. Allow Nasdaq yeah. to show you how it moves. Allow Nasdaq to tell you what it does at that time. You know, so Nasdaq, Nasdaq, Nasdaq doesn't move fundamentally. For the longest time, I've I've been thinking that Nasdaq is a fundamental market. That is a lie. We've been taught a lie. Nasdaq is just like any other thing. There's and by the way. There's people that we call technical analysts for the Nasdaq market. They, spe they specialize on that. Even the banks have those people that specialize on technically analyzing Nasdaq. So this means yeah. that it's very much possible for someone to technically kill Nasdaq, te technically master Nasdaq. So I choose to be that guy. I, mean, I don't I mean, think, up, think, up, think about this, right? If, if Nasdaq, if Nasdaq was, wasn't purely technical, and Nasdaq was purely fundamental. Fundamentals, uh, you know, wouldn't wouldn't give us any structure to basically trade Nasdaq of of specific levels. 
we would we would only trade Nasdaq based on news release. But there's times where there's no news, but we can still come on and trade Nasdaq. And also, you cannot you cannot master the skill of fundamentals because you don't know what they are gonna say. You know what I'm saying? You can't dog, you can't go into into companies' minds and say you are you are mastering the news. It's like you are trying to master someone's life because you won't know the next move. That's that's what it is. How the hell on earth would you know that Apple is losing stocks or gaining stocks? Well, you wouldn't know. And so, you, you wouldn't know. And I mean and I mean, bro, this is how these companies work. If and I want you to notice this, right? I want you to notice this. If there's ever Vima Dondo, shout out. Hey, Vima Dondo, Vima Dondo. So there's there's, there's, there's there's something that I want you to notice there. So these companies are real companies, like actual companies that have real money invested into them. They've been uh, working, uh, obviously, with, with these companies for years and they've invested quite a lot of money. If there's ever any negative um, fundamentals that affect that specific company, investors are going to have a meeting and sort that thing out. So it means you can't really depend on negative impact that comes out from Nasdaq, from, from whatever company, because you don't know what these guys can do to pull out moves to basically sort that thing out in a space of two minutes. You know what I'm saying? So you can't say you, don't know you are entirely point. dependent on fundamentals to trade Nasdaq. Fundamentals can only help you understand the movement of Nasdaq. They are not the main thing to basically understand. Yeah, so what I'm saying, boy, is what we've been taught is a lie. What we've been taught is a lie. You can't, you can't really predict that Nasdaq is, is going to take out negative fundamentals or positive fundamentals. I mean, it, ha it, ha it, happens, it happens automatically, boy. So the fundamental, the fundamental people are people that have technical analysts looking at the charts, and then um, they go, they go to the Twitter, they go to the CNBC app, they go to whatever app, and they start speaking things that are gonna move the market to that direction. So this is what I always say: in physics, we learned about um, a certain element that's called the catalyst. So the catalyst is something that speeds up the reaction. Yeah. So, yeah. also in the market, the news serve as a catalyst. I they like always that. speed they up the reaction. Structure, they complete structure. Let's let's say let's say we have a head and shoulder now on the H four, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, whatever. When the market is on the right shoulder, and the fundamentals, the fundamental guys know that the market has to sell. It's on the right shoulder now. The fundamental guys know that Nasdaq has to sell or whatever currency pair has to sell. This is what they do. They just create a hype around that pair. They just create something around that pair. And for instance, they say, um, okay, guys, we need we need a very a very a very huge drop on NAS one hundred. Yeah. We need what a very huge do? drop. We need a very huge drop on NAS 100. These are the technical guys now. We need a very huge drop on NAS 100. And it's on the right shoulder. Ne? It's on the right shoulder. And yeah. there's also the hate. So they take out news. And they know that traders know that that's a head and shoulder party. They know. Yeah. The, the, these guys know. We are talking about market makers. We are talking about very serious people in the market. People that know how you trade, how I trade. And if you want to be a best trader, you need to understand how these people think, how these people react. That is how you master the chart. So they know the market is on the right shoulder. They take out news now. And the support is about 100 points, 100 points uh, away. The support is 100 points away. And the head is like 60 points away. So there's there's 60 points between the right shoulder and the head. There's 100 points between the right shoulder and the support. They know that traders are targeting their 100 points. Let's take us to sell now, right? Yeah. So these guys come. Or Donald Trump tweets. Things are getting better for the United States. As a, t as a fundamental guy, you do what? You buy. Yeah. 
And you know what Nesdaq does at that point? Remember, there's 60 points between the head and the right shoulder. Nesdaq yeah. rises for 20 points. It rises for 20 points. You've, and the fundamentals are only going to come up after that rise, right? Because yeah. Donald, Donald Trump tweets, okay, let's say it rises for 20 points. It's on the right shoulder. It rises for 20 points. And they say, Nasdaq raises gains. It raises losses. Because remember, from the head to, re to the right shoulder, that's a loss. And then they, they take out fundamentals on the right shoulder. They say, Nasdaq raises today's gains by 20 points. By the time that, that, uh, that notification comes to your phone, you start buying Nasdaq. You start buying Nasdaq. There's 60 points. It rose for 20 points. Immediately you put in your buys. Immediately you put in your buys. That thing drops and sells like fat cakes. So what is this now? Fundamentals came to, to manipulate the sellers and to, to, trap, the, to trap the buyers. So yeah. they're confusing the sellers and they're trapping the buyers into thinking that the right shoulder has been broken. We are going up. The minute you start placing your buys because of that notification on your on your app, that thing sells like fake cakes. That is why I prefer to be to be to to be a, a, a what? I prefer to be a, a technical guy. So by the time the market gets to the head, I'm already in. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm already in. When it gets to the right shoulder, these are my re-entries. My stop losses where is above the head. Unless they break the head, then the market is still selling because this is a this is a high, this is a higher high, this is a lower high. So even yeah. the high that's here, that's still a lower that's high. That's still a lower high, yes. Unless you break above the head, then I can say the structure is broken, and that cannot happen. No fundamentals can break that structure. Once the market prints a high and prints a low, we have the high that we are expecting. They can extend that high to that point, but they cannot break structure. So that is why I prefer yeah. to be a technical trade. So if, 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 if you hear someone telling you that Nasdaq is fundamental, just know that that person, that person is not complete on their, on their, on their, on their uh, trading. Because you, know? you, you, need, you need to be very technical when it comes to Nasdaq. You need to know where it's going to turn and why is yeah. it going to turn. Which is, which, is why I think, which is why I think people need to start on currency to polish technicals before they can go to Nasdaq to basically 100%. understand basically understand that um, technicals complement fun, uh, fundamentals complement technicals because I mean the market doesn't fundamentally move it can only move technically and sometimes as you're saying you just need that catalyst to basically move the market towards a specific direction and you learn that on currencies. Like if you're really good on currencies, you'll know that actually fundamentals complement the cycle. And that's when you can come on Nasdaq and basically understand that. And on the comments, I saw someone saying, um, you know, 330, blah, 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 blah. I, I would like to say this, that a lot of people actually don't know what 330 is. 330 is not news, guys. Like Nasdaq doesn't have news every day at half past three. Like that's a lie. Like if someone comes and says, I'm trading Nasdaq news at half past three. Like that person is merely telling you like subliminally that I don't know what I'm doing and I need help. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's what they are, they are saying to us because the reason why Nasdaq moves that erratic and I'm going to use that term and I'm also minding the use of my words right now. The reason why Nasdaq moves that erratic at 3.30 is probably because that's the market open of the U.S. session by that time. I mean, if you trade in currencies, you'll know that at top on the daily break, you can get a huge candle to the downside and then they close above. That can happen upon the open of the markets on that time. So Just be very practical. Yeah. Just be very practical. On Monday, we were live. Yeah. yeah. Remember yeah. on Friday, the market sold like crazy. Sold like yeah. crazy. As soon as it got to the bottom, started buying on the H4. Started buying, 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 buying. And the candle stayed closed as what? As a bullish pin bar on the H4, yeah. right? Yeah. On Monday, when we went live, this is what I said to you. I said, my boy, next take is going to say. Yeah. And a lot of people were commenting there. They were saying, uh, 
No, let's take his gonna buy. He's check gonna leave the spike, yeah. Yeah, check check that spike, dog. Check that spike, dog. Let's take his gonna buy. What's what? On your life. On your life. I yeah. said to you, on your life. Boy, I'm selling Nasdaq now. And a lot of people were like, ah, this thing is buying. This thing is buying. I was like, to everyone um, that is on the live, can we go sell Nasdaq? I even went out of your life and went and sold Nasdaq. As soon as yeah. I sold, as soon as I sold, that thing dropped. It dropped yeah. like a dying person, straight to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know and this is why this is why I saw I didn't sell because I knew that Nestec was going to sell like that I sold I sold because technically we, we hadn't broken stretch for the best yeah. though people this is how the market makers think they know that Nestec is a buying market they know that a lot of people are looking at buying Nestec yeah. So they, they created that drop, 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 drop. And then they closed the path. <laughs> it dropped like one, boy. It dropped ah, like one. Thing. Dropped like a tiny person. Like, like a mundo fire. It dropped like this. <laughs> you see, this, this is what I'm trying to explain. <laughs> This is what I'm trying. This 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 is what I'm trying to explain. I didn't sell because I knew that Nestec was gonna sell like that. I sold because structure confirmed that we haven't broken the bearish move. Even though, even though, yeah. even though we 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 had that spike and people were hyped up. Ah, now now it's time to go up. A lot of people were posting Nestec finally buying. Nestec finally buying. Who said that Nestec was finally buying? No one. It's only Instagram traders. But when you get to the charts and you analyze on the charts, did the charts say that we are buying? No. So the charts were still confirming self. I even told you on the live, bro. I told you. You see this resistance that we are in now? It's been rejected for over three days. That's what's that the trade we are holding? Yeah. Pushing nice. So I'm I'm saying to you, boy. Um I sold there because the structure said we are selling. You don't understand? So that's why that's that's why I sold. I sold because structure said we are selling. And check what happened. When we were on your line, literally five minutes, I made twelve thousand. Because why? The thing sold. Even today, boy, dog, you can never go wrong on your funder, on your on your on your technicals, my boy. You can never go wrong on your technicals, my boy. Yeah, I think I think people need to need to shift from that point where, like, you know, you know, on this live, what I'm learning and what I'm basically picking up for for the audience is that uh, people have to get to that point where they 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 need to unlearn to relearn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we have to unlearn a lot of things that have been taught to us to basically relearn new things because we have we have been taught so many things that aren't necessarily true and we've run with them and the reason why there is actually i'm ish, my twin my twin what's happening dog what's happening ish. why is kiss's network now pausing guys why is his network now pausing i think his phone i think his phone dog are you back i'm here boy yeah so i'm saying like we need to we need to unlearn to relearn because We've basically gotten to that point where we trust information that is on Instagram more than information that is um, on on paper. You know, like we feel like if we can go read stuff, like read up stuff about trading, like take up a course about trading from a guy who's not on Instagram, we feel like that's that's not as reliable as the guy who's on Instagram because we've seen them uh, probably pushing and succeeding and blah blah blah. And, People don't know that most of the success that we have is fabricated success. You know what I'm saying? And so it yeah. becomes difficult for them to, to unlearn certain things because of what they've seen. And that's what people need to get to, that Nasdaq is purely technical, just like any other instrument. And you cannot trade Nasdaq if you don't understand technicals. 
And the best way to understand technicals is to start point zero, which is in currencies. And the reason why, God, the reason why we have over 300 people watching this live is because people love Nasdaq, dog. You know what I'm saying? People love Nasdaq. Again, they, they are not open to trading anything else but Nasdaq because they feel like Nasdaq has more money. You know what I'm saying? And you're dropping gems on Nasdaq. People are more interested in taking notes for Nasdaq. But in their heads, dog, it's difficult for them to actually understand that we need to get to a point where we de-attach from Nasdaq to go and learn about structure and then come back to NAS 100 as well. Yeah. So, boy, for the last time, as I'm about to leave, this, this is my advice to every trader that is out there. Uh, this this what we've always preached as the Genesis boy. Yeah. Chase peeps, not money. So yeah. And a couple of days you've been saying, uh, master the skill and you'll never go broke. You see? Yeah. So once you master the skill of trading, that is where the actual, actual, actual breakthrough comes in. You know, because you, you, you can trade for years, taking chances. I just saw some shocking results today of a certain mentor that I won't mention on this live, you know. Um, some people are playing games out there, man. Yeah, I know some people are playing. Man. Some people are playing games out there, man. You see, this is what I'm saying, that most, like the success that we see dog, on Instagram is actually fabricated success. Like, they... It's an illusion, boy. It's, it's basically an illusion. And, you know, it's so sad that, like, you know, innocent people are being taken for granted. For granted, yeah. You know, yeah, no, I, this is, this is really... Is I, 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 know, I know what you're talking about, though. I know what you're talking about. It is what it is. But anyways, um, as, as, as a trader, I believe so much that uh, you can just do one deposit and that's that's it you know you can deposit once into a trading account and, and never deposit and again. never deposit again and obviously yeah. that comes with the skill you know it comes with mastering your craft that comes with the right discipline the proper way of trading and all of that you know so we need to we need to we need to groom a different generation of traders that's my that's my heart desire boy Grooming a different generation of traders, a different breed of traders, a different type of traders, you know, a, a whole different generation of traders. Traders that are not are not the same um, as the traders that we have now, the traders that we had before we even joined the game. People are selling lifestyle out there. People are selling materialistic mm. things. People are selling phones. They're selling cars. They're selling clothes. Guys, these things don't mean that you have made it in the game. Obviously, these things come with having the money. We don't know how you get that money. We don't know how that money comes to you. The actual yeah. money is in the charts, you know. But yeah. we have a minute remaining, Brian. Yeah, we have a minute remaining. Ah, that's nice, fine, boy. Let's say a good bye, a good night. Shout out to everyone that joined. Please save this life, boy. We'll talk tomorrow. Yeah, no, guys. Have a blessed evening. Shout out to Major, Mr. L, and other. Uh, Jen, so actually join on this live and then we'll go live tomorrow again. I'll save the live on my on my IGTV. You can find it there. Peace out, guys. Shout out. Yes.